Roblox has been around for a pretty long time, dating as far back as 2006. With the website dating back that long, Roblox game developers have come and go granting the platform all sorts of different games and experiences. One of Roblox's many great and, I would argue, even iconic developers is that of Zeke Heaven. I mean, he's one of the few developers to even have his own minifigure. Still working on Roblox games to this day, Zeke Heaven has been on Roblox for a pretty long time, eventually getting into game development around 2013. This is where he would begin creating arguably the most unique experiences the platform has to offer. So with that small intro out of the way, I'm Kylo Cooper, and today we're going to be talking about one of Roblox's most unique developers, that being Zeke Heaven. So, who is Z Kevin? Well, Z Kevin is a Roblox developer who joined January 24th in 2011. He is widely known across the community for games such as Q Cavern, Robot 64, and many others that I'll be talking about later in this video. Z Kevin has created and contributed to the creation of many Roblox games, each of his games covering a variety of different genres, such as platformers, dungeon crawlers, simulators, top-down RPGs, racing games, blammo, but what makes Z Kevin such a unique developer? If you have played any of Z Kevin's games, you will notice a certain aesthetic to it, whether it's through dialogue, character design, music, or even gameplay, his games hold a certain charm that not a lot of developers capture. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into his games, going over gameplay, characters, and oddly enough, the universe that his games take place in. So let's start at the very beginning with Cube Cavern. Okay, so when I say very beginning, Z Kevin has technically made a few games before this, but I I'll talk about that later, that, that, that doesn't matter. Anyway, now let's talk about Cube Cavern. Cube Cavern is a Roblox dungeon crawler created all the way back in 2015. The game was created by Z Kevin and Cliche Chloe. If you don't know who Cliche Chloe is, they are mostly known for their game Ramona and their other game Mystery Lake. I highly recommend you check out both of those games because they are very well made. Now let's actually talk about the game itself. Cube Cavern is a first person dungeon crawler where you explore different dungeons, collect and craft items, and fight different bosses. For some reason when I used to play this game as a kid, I always felt off about it. Whether it was the music or the setting, the dungeons could easily shift from these weird caverns full of strange looking monsters to an almost eerie and scary setting. So how about gameplay? Well, the game is pretty simple. You basically have to make your way through the different rooms of each dungeon until you make it to the boss. Along the way, you'll encounter different monsters, rooms, and even a shop while making your way to the boss. One of the core game mechanics is the crafting system. To craft, you basically have to find certain items, drop them into a crafting table, and bam, you just crafted a weapon. There are other items you can craft aside from weapons, like the jetpack and the charged whip, which make traversing the different floors a breeze. 
As for the bosses, they are pretty difficult at first, doing massive amounts of HP, but once you learn their patterns, they become much easier to deal with. Now, this game has always had a nostalgic feel to it, and honestly, I still adore this game to this day. Now, there is a remake of this game that has released, and I'll talk about it later, but for now, let's move on to the next game, which is Purple Skittles. Okay, so a little fun uh, cube cavern fact, or I guess just Roblox fact in general. While doing some research for this game, I found this really old cube cavern review done on the Roblox official YouTube channel. This is a video is apparently a part of a series of different Roblox reviews made by this guy named MaxXZ. And looking at the full playlist, there are over 188 reviews done by this guy, ranging from 2011 in to 2016. What the f- Hey friends, today I'm gonna show you Cube Cavern, a really cool adventure, cave exploration, crafting, and everything that goes with it game here on Game Reviews by Max. Stay tuned for a detailed review with exclusive pro tips to give you a head start the first time you play. It's all coming up right here. Pro tip, use a rock as your first ranged weapon, and when you find a stick, craft it together with the rock, then boom, dagger. Another fun feature is that every time you chat, your character makes funny noises. If you've ever played Animal Crossing, it's almost like Animal Ease. You know, like... Yeah, okay, you get it. Skip about a year later, and we get Purple Skittles. Now, out of all of the games I'm going to be going over, this is the game I knew least about. And another thing is that this game has a lot of that charm I mentioned in the introduction that Z Kevin adds to his games. I use charm lightly because this game is a actual fever dream. Inspired by Undertale and Earthbound, Purple Skittles is a top-down RPG where you play as a little guy named Timothy. The game revolves around you traveling the map, challenging people to air hockey matches to find the purple skittle. The game itself is honestly pretty well made, with amazing sprite design and an OST so good I actually thought it was from Earthbound. One of the main factors of purple skittles is its combat. When you get put into combat, Timothy has a bunch of different stats that affect the battle. These stats get upgraded through fighting your opponents and leveling up. Your stats being your cool stat, which is HP, your attack obviously just being your attack damage, your speed affecting how fast the hockey pucks are shot at you, and your skittles being your currency. The combat itself is literally just a game of air hockey, with you dealing damage by landing a hockey puck in your opponent's goal. You have a fight option which will deal your attack stat, but you will also have a special attack that puts you into an actual game of air hockey where if you land an attack, you will deal extra damage. However, the risk being that you take damage yourself if you miss. As for the story, you basically have to battle your way through a variety of different areas, being your hometown, a desert, a really weird business town, a cracked up carnival, some satanic forest, the vast ocean, a I don't even know how to explain this island, the moon, and ending it all off with a final battle against Mr. Nopos. And along this journey, you'll encounter a lot of different characters with very interesting dialogue. You'll also find a lot of different items and costumes found inside your refrigerators scattered around the map. Now, I will admit, Purple Skittles was really fun. Granted that it probably took the longest to record out of all of the games I played in this video, I had a lot of fun exploring and interacting with this strange world. I should also admit that this game is probably the stupidest game made by Z Kevin. Now, onto the next game, which is. 
blammo. Alright, and enter Blammo. Now, Blammo is basically a game with really no purpose, and yet it still is an interesting experience nonetheless. Now, in Blammo, you play as this little pill-shaped creature, and you just travel to different dimensions meeting new NPCs and characters. To interact with the NPCs, all you have to do is either nod your camera for yes, or shake your head for no. And that's literally all there is to the game. You kind of just wander around talking to these strange characters, which the design of these characters kind of remind me of Fantastic Frontier in a way. Which, there will be a video on that someday. Aside from that, however, the only thing I should really reference about Blammo is that he has made an appearance in Jailbreak, which as a kid I thought was pretty cool. And another thing I think I should reference is the train station and the train itself. To travel to these different dimensions, you hop on this big train with a very strange looking face which we'll talk about later. Now with that short explanation out of the way, let's move on to a pretty important game, which is Cleaning Simulator. In 2017 would roll around and Zeke Heaven would go on to create Bribbleco. Bribbleco is a Roblox group run by Zeke Heaven alongside a variety of other developers. This would lead to the creation of the company's first game, Cleaning Simulator. Cleaning Simulator is literally just a cleaning simulator. You boot up your computer, pick a character, and bam, you are tasked with cleaning the Bribbleco building. While cleaning is your main objective within the game, the game has a variety of unlockable achievements, secrets, and a lot of references to Z Kevin and his games. Playing this game with a group of friends is probably the best way to experience this game in my opinion. Granted that it is really easy to sabotage a playthrough of this game as one of my friends literally went out of their way to break every single window in the building. And not only did he do that, but he also managed to steal every single cassette tape we had collected and hid them from us. Now, let's actually talk about Cleaning Simulator's gameplay. When you enter the game, you are tasked with cleaning the Bribble Co. building, with each of the floors being randomly generated. This is kind of true, however, the first few bottom floors in the checkerboard floor are usually in the same place. You are given a mop and a spray gun, which can be used to clean their respective messes the spray gun cleaning up dirt, and the mop cleaning up water. You'll know when an area is fully clean by either noticing the sparks and glitter floating around one of the floors, or a bunch of rainbow stars will appear after cleaning up your final mess. Once you have cleaned roughly around 85% of Bribbleco, you are forced into a cutscene where we learn that the Bribbleco CEO is missing. Upon further inspection, we will notice a massive monster has appeared at the top of the building, and it's up to us to stop it. Equipped with your spray gun, you simply have to just go up there, avoid getting knocked off the building, and spray the monster in its weak spot, which is its eye. After you defeat the giant monster, you are gifted with your first ever paycheck. 
Now, if there's anything I have to say about Cleaning Simulator, is that it's a really remarkable game. The game was really enjoyable, especially experiencing the game with my friends. But what makes the game so wholesome is its references to the past. Through the use of trinkets, plushies, and cassette tapes, the game is filled to the brim with references to Z Kevin and his games, in a way almost being a celebration of the games that came before it, and being a welcome to a new Roblox developer group. Cleaning Simulator is a lot of things. It's an innovative way to just goof off with some friends, it's a way to look into the past, and most of all, it's a warm welcome to what games would be made next by this new unique group. Which, speaking of what's next, the next game on our list is definitely the most iconic out of all of the games I will be talking about. That of course being... Robot 64. Now we finally get to talk about Z Kevin's arguably most recognizable and in my opinion probably his best game. If you don't know what Robot 64 is, well you're in for a treat. Robot 64 is a 3D platformer based off the infamous Super Mario 64. You play as this little blue robot named Bebo and some guy on a small radio named Dr. Smar tells you that you need to destroy the sun. Let that kind of sink in for a minute. Anyway, your goal is to travel to the different worlds collecting ice creams. You collect candy, which serves as your currency for cosmetics, and the ice creams which are used to unlock more levels. Most of the ice creams in the game can just be found around the map, while others require you to do a certain objective before unlocking the ice cream. While most of the challenges and special stages to unlock ice creams were really fun, there was only really one challenge that I struggled with, to the point where I questioned my own sanity. I should also mention that one of the ice cream challenges just straight up involves you abusing this poor little guy named Job. Anyway, as Bebo, you are given a variety of movement options. Long jumps, lunges, backflips, helicopter spins, double jumps, wall runs, let's just say he's very agile. Many of the ice cream challenges involve actually teaching the player how to fully optimize Bebo's movement kit. These challenges I thought were probably the best as you were able to learn and master Bebo's capabilities. Alongside your movement kit, you are also granted three tools that you can unlock in certain worlds. These being the jetpack, skateboard, and the flamethrower. Each tool being optimized in some way in their respected world. Speaking of the different worlds, I found myself having the most fun in the worlds that let you test your abilities. My favorites being Turtle Tops, Heck Lands, Tiny Huge Bedroom, and Snow Zone Cave. Aside from the fantastic music, each of these worlds had a set purpose. Turtle Tops teaching the player the game's core mechanics, the Heck Lands testing our skills through challenges and a boss fight, the tiny huge bedroom showing the fun and creative side of the game, and the snow zone cavern being what I would consider the best world in the game, not only for its aesthetic and OST, but also working as a sort of fun end of the game DLC letting the player show off what they've learned, all while learning how to use a brand new mechanic, that being the flamethrower tool. After you collect a bunch of ice creams, you arrive on planet Kebuyuan, which is just the moon. Looking at the face, it kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? Anyway, on planet Keba Bulan, I have really no idea how to pronounce it, so just, just work with me here. You are given seven challenges, each representing the seven worlds you've collected ice creams on. These challenges kind of work as a test of skill, but also a send-off as you've reached the end of your journey. 
After completing the challenges, you hop on the bike frame and enter your final battle. The final battle is a standard shoot 'em up where you shoot ice cream out of the sun. If anything, it kinda just reminds you of the final battle in Kirby Planet Robobot. In the end, we destroy the sun and meet up with Dr. Smar, who tells us that he is now rich because he sold his turnip cleaning business to Brivalco. Okay, take a pause for a minute. I, I gotta I gotta get something. I gotta wrap something around my head here. So this guy, Dr. Smar, literally created a robot that blew up the sun with the power of ice cream. He also just happened to make a machine that also replicates the sun. And now he has created organic life to clean people's property? Hey, wait a minute! Now, Robot 64, as it stands, is easily one of Z Kevin's greatest games. Not only from a gameplay standpoint, but from a community standpoint as well. One of the most admirable things about Z Kevin and his games is the community that is built around them, with many of his games getting remakes or modded versions of them that have been uploaded for Roblox players to test and enjoy. Now, with Robot 64 out of the way, let's move on to our next game, which is Snow Day. A little while after the success of Robot 64, a smaller game would be released called Snow Day. Snow Day wasn't anything super big, but it was just a simple fighting game where you just blast your friends with snowballs. It's just a simple fun battle royale game, and to be honest, that's all it needed to be. You simply wander around an abandoned town covered in frost, throwing snowballs and finding old hats. However, the game does have a much deeper purpose, one rooted in the lore of Z Kevin's games. Ever since Cleaning Simulator and Robot 64, there have been little hints of lore appearing in the games. Robot 64 showing the, how the vegetable janitors were made, and Cleaning Simulator introducing us to the Bribble Co. company. This would all bring us to Bribble Co.'s next game, which is... Super Cube Cavern. Similarly to its predecessor, Super Cube Cavern is a Roblox dungeon crawler based around exploring different caverns, crafting new items, and fighting new monsters. However, while the game still follows a similar format as the original, the game has made a lot of changes. One of the first things you'll notice is the brand new models. In Cube Cavern, almost everything in the game from its structures, weapons, and even cosmetics were made of cubes. This has been changed as your player model now resembles Bebo from Robot 64, with the most of the weapons and the monsters having that same sort of style. The only thing that is staying true to its original design is the caverns, which I will... I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Super Cube Cavern was given a massive content overhaul. The original Cube Cavern had a very limited selection with only a few swords and tools that you could use. Super Q Cavern, however, has a much larger quantity of items, giving the player different tools, weapons, and even cosmetics for them to equip. Along with their brand new weapons, Super Q Cavern was also given a brand new soundtrack, giving us probably the best music out of every game I've gone over on this list. One of the biggest changes to Cube Cavern was the design of the caverns themselves. In my Roblox RPG game tier list, this was one of my main critiques with the game alongside its gameplay, where I praised Cube Cavern for fun rooms that you could learn and master to later easily traverse, Super Cube Cavern basically throws that all away for randomly generated dungeons. The problem with this is that when you'd spawn in, you could either spawn right next to the exit and not even have to look through the dungeon at all, or you'd end up searching the entire map for 10 minutes just to find the exit to the next floor. Another problem I had with this game was specifically its combat. Whenever I would go to swing or attack an enemy, I would usually end up getting hit by them. This was most apparent in the game's second boss fight, where during one of the phases, you have to engage in a short battle against some mushroom enemies. At first, I tried to hit them at a distance with my boomerang, which flew right over them. Then I tried to hit them with my sword, which ended up getting me hit instead. And then I ended up using the hammer, which I got from the boss to kill them, 
even though I was still getting hit. So what do I think of Super Cube Cavern? Well, I think the game is lacking in a lot of areas. The caverns aren't that fun to traverse, and killing monsters can be a total pain. But do I believe that this game is a lost cause? No. I think this game actually has a lot of potential to be a very good adventure game. Things like the combat could be changed by making enemies have more distinctive attacks that could leave them open for a counterattack. Or you could just add a shift lock mechanic so you could better move your character around the caverns. And the caverns could be redone to a room based format similar to that of the original. Or you could take a completely different approach and make one massive cavern that is randomly generated and you could explore that entire cavern. Now, I could go on about my ideas and thoughts about this game, but I might just save that for its own video. So, let's move on to that, our next game, which is Road to Grambies. Okay, now we get to Road to Grambies. Now, this game is, uh... Well, it's a game. Now, the most I knew about this game was from a video that Flamingo made on the game a while ago, and even then, I had no idea that Z Kevin even worked on the game. In hindsight, I'm not surprised. But anyway, Road to Grambies revolves around you playing as some, um, guy, and your goal is to make it to Grambies. You get a gun and a car, and you're off into the world. This game is just really crazy. From the wild modifications you can add to your car, all the way down to the road itself, the path you take to Grambies is actually horrible. Like, I don't know who paved the road, but it sucks. Aside from that, the game is just a really fun sandbox. The car modifications, which range from just simple car parts all the way to propellers and magical gravity gadgets, which these items can be attached to your car in basically any way. Now the game does involve some PvP with you having a gun so you can just shoot random people that you see on the side of the street like a drive-by, but out of all of the games on this list, this one was probably my least favorite just because I didn't enjoy driving around with barely anything happening. Now it's probably a different experience with friends, but for me, I thought the game was okay. So what is next from Z Kevin? Well, on Z Kevin's YouTube channel, we get a video titled The Bribble Coat Quality Corner. This video was in the format of a Nintendo Direct and was informative. Take a look at this stupid idiot. Hope to God that damn creature never shows its face again. The video consisted of a 2D Super Cube Cavern, some Blamo Temple Run game, a Gramby's House game, and a TV show. Good morning, world. Hey, I'm Todd. Todd the Turner. I work for Bribbleco. I'm the janitor. Well, one of many janitors. My job consists of keeping the place clean, and uh, sometimes other jobs will come up, but usually I try not to sweat the small stuff. All in all, there's no place I'd rather work. Yeah, apparently there's a cartoon coming out based around cleaning simulator, which is pretty neat. Now, the main thing that caught my interest was near the end of the Quality Corner video. That's right. The fan favorite Robot 64 sequel, or should I say, prequel, is currently in development. Robot 32, the sequel, or I guess prequel to Robot 64, is a brand new adventure game in the works. Robot 32 does have a demo release, and at first glance, it seems pretty similar to the original, but with some noticeable changes. Starting off with the most obvious is that instead of playing as our beloved Bebo, 
instead we get to play as Tempo, and assumably this other character, but I have no idea what they're called. Something I also noticed right off the bat is how Tempo feels to play. When you play as Bebo, he is an incredibly floaty character. With Tempo, however, he seems more stiff and grounded to control. Now, maybe that's because of his different moveset from Bebo, but honestly, it's whatever. If anything, I'm excited to play this game when it fully releases, because right now, it looks really good. After taking a look back at all of Z Kevin's games that he has worked on, it's honestly really impressive. Over the course of practically 8 years, he's continued to work and develop all of these amazing games of all varieties. Alright, and that concludes today's retrospective. Now, I know I didn't go over every single Z Kevin game, such as Sonic Ball, Kevin Kart, and a lot of his other games. The main reason being that there just wasn't a lot to talk about, but if you guys would like me to make a part 2 to this video, then I would not only go over all of the games I missed, but I would also like to go into depth about all of the fan games and mods made around Z Kevin's games. I would also like to say a big thank you to all the people that helped in the Bribbleco Discord server. They helped me get a lot of information about games. Like, there are a lot of people in this Discord server dedicated to Bribbleco and the games associated with it. I mean, some dude made an entire website listing each game from date of creation. Which is really impressive. So, yeah, that's the end of this video. Let me know what you guys want me to do another retrospective on, and let me know what your favorite Z Kevin game is. And please, I recommend that you guys investigate his games, even the ones I didn't go over because his work is truly amazing. And with this retrospective concluded, I'm Kylo Cooper, and I'll see you guys in the next one.